welcome to Heartbeat. Today, I want to talk about how we can sometimes limit God, how we can sometimes block God out of our lives and therefore limit the action that he can have in our lives. I've been reading scripture lately and I've been blown away more and more about the grandeur of who God is, about how compassionate he is, about how loving he is, how he just wants to pour his abundant grace upon us. And I've been moved in myself. I've felt like God say to me that there's just so much more, Emma. There's more depth to who he is. There's more depth to who his character is that I'm just only touching the surface of and he wants to show me more. But often I think that I limit what God wants to show me because I think about him in light of myself. I think about how limited I am and the struggles that I have. And I put that on God and think, well, God couldn't be more compassionate because, well, I know the limits of my compassion. And God couldn't show me more kindness because I know the limits of my kindness. And I do it even without thinking. But I want to encourage you today, don't limit God. Our God is bigger, greater and larger than we can even imagine. There's another level that God wants to take us to. There's another level that God wants to show us. And he doesn't want us to limit him by our limited selves. And I limit God sometimes by the way I live my relationship with him. I don't turn to him when I should. I don't trust him because I put constraints on whether I think God can love me, whether I think God can show me mercy, whether I think God can forgive me again and again, or whether I think God will continue to show me compassion. I've shared with you before that I have a daughter named Hannah who has an intellectual disability. And before I had Hannah, I would have said to you that I was a kind person. I felt like I always tried to be a person of kindness to those around me. But after having Hannah, God just showed me a deeper level of what it is to be kind to people, to love people for who they really are, for who they've been made to be. And God just has taken me to a whole nother level. So he has shown me and revealed to me a greater depth in kindness. He has shown me how to love people at a deeper level and he can do that for us to help us to love others more, but he can also pour that upon us when we need it. Particularly, I've been drawn lately when I've been reading the Bible to how compassionate God is for us, how much he just wants to help us and love us. And I was reading this scripture that I'm about to share with you now. And when you first read it, it's not probably something that jumps out to you that maybe straight away speaks compassion because it feels like it's more talking about rules. But I'll explain to you what I felt like when I was reading it, what God said to me. And when I say what God said to me, it's because as I'm reading it, it's like I get this thought in my mind of, wow, how compassionate are you, God? Or I get this quickening, what I would describe in my spirit of who I am saying, see, Emma, I want to show you more. This is how much I love you. Look at it. This is how much I love you. This is kind of what I got when I was reading this scripture. And it's in the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10 to 17. It says, Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on, though, sorry, come on those days. I'll say it again. Verse 14, it says, but the leader of the synagogue Indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, 
does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. So here's this scripture where this woman who's been bent over for 18 years and is crippled comes into the synagogue and Jesus says to her, come over and I will heal you. And he lays his hands on her and he heals her. And then the leader of the synagogue points out that you shouldn't be doing work on the Sabbath day. It was a day of rest. It was a day that the Jewish people, you're not meant to do any work. And he speaks this out to put shame on Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, well, don't you still need to take your donkey out to have a drink of water if you need? There are some things you need to do. But more than that, Jesus is saying, but I am God and I want to show you a deeper way. I want to show this woman compassion. I want to show you the love that I have for people that doesn't have to be restricted and constrained by these rules. He wants to show his love for us. And when I was reading that, that's what spoke to me about the compassion that God has for this woman, that he couldn't help but heal her. He couldn't help but love her because that is who God is. But we can limit God by restrictions that we put on him, how we think he should be and how he should act. I limit God. I know I do because I know the limits of my own compassion to people. I know, have you ever said phrases like this? Too bad. They had their chance. It's on them now. You can be compassionate to a certain point. You're compassionate for someone in a situation. But then at a certain point, you just go, oh, too bad. It's their fault. They only got themselves to blame. Have you said things like that before? Because I know I have. And I limit how much or how little compassion I think God can show because I know of the limitations of myself. And I begin to do this with my relationship with God. When things happen in my life, I can begin to say things like this. Why would he forgive me? Why would he, why would he show compassion to me again? Why would God show me grace considering what I've done? I've asked God a lot lately, so I can't ask him again. Too bad, I've had my chance. It's all my fault. I've said things like that many times. Have you? And by doing that, we limit what God can do in our lives because we're making a decision that God can't show greater compassion, that God can't pour more love upon us, that God can't forgive us again. But I want to encourage you today and assure you that he can. The depths of love that God has for you are boundless and are endless and he wants to continue to pour that upon you. There's um, the story in the Bible, you've probably read it, of where Jesus blesses the little children and they come to him. It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 13. And it says this, Then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them and went on his way. And as I was preparing this heartbeat today, it made me think of this story because Jesus was probably tired. He's probably been preaching out all day, healing people. He's already had a lot of people come to him. And then people want to bring their children. And the disciples say, no, no, don't, don't bring them. They speak sternly to whoever, I assume the adults, the parents who have brought the children. But Jesus says, no, 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 bring them to me because he doesn't want to be limited by what we think he should be doing. He's not limited by tiredness. He's not limited by the day that he's had. 
our God continues to give and give and the depth of who he is just continues to go on and on. And he wants us like the little children to come to him. And he says, come. We limit God. We do. And I want to encourage you today. Don't limit the action of what God can do in your life because you yourself are limited. Our God is limitless. Our God can make a way in your life. He can come and he can continue to pour his love and abundant grace upon you and he wants to. Don't limit what you think God can do for you just because you can't do something. I think we often do that because our brains are limited. There's only so much we can think of. We're only so much capacity, but our God is bigger than what we could ever dream or imagine. In the book of Ephesians, it says, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length, the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I love that. May we have the power to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. It's just so beautiful to to try and explain how great God's love is for us. And even then it's greater than that. So I encourage you today, don't limit God. Don't limit God by what he can do in your life by blocking him out. Continue to go to him, continue to turn to him, continue to trust in him and allow him to show you the depths of who he is. Allow him to show you the depths of his love for you, the depths of his mercy, how much grace he just wants to pour upon you. Allow him to show you in your life and don't limit what he can do in you. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I thank you that you are a limitless God. Your love for us is never ending. It's boundless. And Lord, I thank you that you continue to want to pour your grace upon us. Lord, for those times that we do limit you, where we think, oh, I can't go to God again. I can't ask him again. Oh, he wouldn't do that for me. When we have those thoughts, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would speak to us, that you would cause us to turn to you, that you would at those moments pour your love upon us again, Lord Jesus, so that we would know the depths of who you are and the depth of the love that you have for us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for always being with us and for walking with us. And I ask all of this in your mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.